This is the only bad part about 3D printing. And again, that's why the dual extruder is going to be so awesome. Oh, hey there, Mission Control. It's an exciting week here. Uh, we actually have enough grow boxes printed now to start retrofitting our grow wall test, our test wall that we had set up with the new boxes. These are the version 11s uh, as they've been come to track as. And one of the things that I have a problem with that we're gonna fix here during uh, this little pause while we do some testing is some of these <clears throat> have support structures in them. Here, 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 here. And then there's actually a bunch here on the back. And they're really a pain in the butt to dig out. And in some cases it leads to damage uh, because it's so tight in there and the, the structure of the filament is uh, bonded to the other plastic so it actually kind of leaves a little bit of a scar uh, which for testing isn't a huge problem but we don't really want to do that very much and we certainly don't want to break something that takes 24 hours to print this takes 24 hours uh, to print so i spoke to a modix and they have graciously sent us a second print head that is going to go on to big bertha that's right behind you and today we're going to get that installed and <clears throat> We're going to, on that second print head, we're going to be using, uh, I forget, from Spoolworks, this, this actually has a name, uh, Scaffold. This is Scaffold Filament, and what it is specifically made for is for the supports and the structure, like what I was just talking about. But instead of having to dig them out, you simply have to submerge your part in water, and it will dissolve huge time saver uh, because you have to get little tools in, in my tool set here and dig all this stuff out and it takes time it's like whittling you sit on your front porch and whittle but instead of whittling wood we're whittling plastic so we're gonna get that second print head set up and I want to share that with you so let's get started the first thing we got to do is lay out all the parts I think the hardest part that I have to do today, getting the, there's lots of parts here, but that's not the hardest part. The hardest part is going to be routing the control cable because we've got to kind of climb in there and uh, route this all the way back to the control box, which is kind of a pain. And we don't want to kind of screw up the level of the whole thing because that's a big process uh, to get it all re-leveled. So we're going to have to uh, do that carefully. That's probably, like I said, the worst part that we have to do. So secondary print head. And there's also some parts that I have that I gotta go get that allow us to really set this all up. Okay, so I got my instructions up here. I got all the parts accounted for. So then the first thing we do is get the heat block. Wait, no, this piece right here. And arrow, hot end. All right, they're all supposed to be labeled here. Extruder kit. All right, we're getting serious little parts here now. Boy, oh boy. Boy, there's always something. To the parts store. Luckily, I keep spares of stuff. I've learned that lesson the hard way a few times now. Always have spares, especially during Global pandemics. <laughs> you always want to have it then. Oh my goodness. Just got to make it look like the picture, folks. Make it look like the picture. That is weird that they did not send. Even this bag here has one of these screws in it, but not two. It's supposed to come down the bottom. You're not supposed to put goo on this. And we have this guy here. It's nice having done this before. At least it's, you know, not brand new like the first time thermal paste in a syringe so much easier than squeezing out of a small little bag this is the part that got me last time too because you gotta get it just the right angle and the half turn out instructions are good but it's just like you need like a half turn plus <laughs> it's in there now all right finally gee whiz what a mess. Motor mount. Place the motor on the motor mount. Gear drive here. All right, here's the bearing. The infamous bearing. I hope they sent me the updated one. And we start popping these bad boys up in here. 
going to be hard to get you guys a great shot and do all the work here. Got the systems all turned off, heat's off. You can do it with the heat on if you had to do this. Not that you would want to. You wouldn't want to because it sucks. That's why I turned it off. <laughs> it gets really hot in there and those panels get really, really warm. No, it's right there, like that. What did I do wrong there? I did something wrong there on that thing. Ow. Oh, yeah, I missed it. Darn it. I gotta take that all off. There's no way that's the right size. Guys. That's not the right size, guys. What? What? This is not the right size. But I still have that problem. That's not the right size. That hole is a different size. And it's threaded. So that goes in there. But that does not want to go through that thread. All right. The next thing is the fan. I got that all, that thumb screw all figured out. I'm just putting together the part fan assembly here. The hard part is I gotta get way over here. Oh, we got all these adjustments to make. All right, boy, that's starting to look like something. Just got everything connected uh, on the plugs on the back. It's really, really simple. Not You can go see the instructions yourself if you're doing this. Um, you just connect up heater fan one, blower fan one, thermistor one, I think that's it. And then what we gotta do now, this is the hard part. We gotta route this cable back here, down through there, and back into the box. So that is gonna take me time. I gotta pop these little guys off. Those ones are pop off. Oh, this one. There we go. I don't have to do them all. I just have to do enough to be able to route everything up through there. Oh man, got the thing on there the wrong way. Well now I have the hard part. I've got to get all the way to the back and route that cable around. And that is going to be much unfun. And of course they're all on the other side. Oy, unfun. While I was off camera, I thought I was done. I thought I had it all put together because they sent a, a cable with the uh, dual extruder. But, but, that cable is for the big 60, not the big 120, with the enclosure on it. What that means is the cable that I routed up through this thing is the wrong length. So, I've got to reopen this whole bad boy which comes to be, these are, I think these are IGUS cable routing strips here. And they are awesome. I think they're the top of the line for CNC cable management, anything industrial really. And they really thought them out, so they're pretty easy. It's tedious, but not hard to come in and get them all out or opened I should say opened up so I can get to them and it's easier just to you know I was routing them before where I was trying to snake it through but it's just actually easier to open them all up and pop them through lay it down lay it down Julie Brown all right take two much more successful all right, I got all the wiring in, everything's connected. I've got some black filament, you know, that doesn't work very well, so I have low expectations of that. I ran it the same way that I ran it and had success, even though that's not recommended by Modix. Because it was working for me, I really, you know, don't, don't fix it if it ain't broke type of thing. Uh, we got everything on that they say is supposed to be on. I got the blower level here. I leveled the print head according to their first instruction. And now uh, we're going to try to print our first dual extrusion print, which is a configuration print to measure offset 
in the horizontal. Uh, so right now it's uh, everything's heated up. Look, the second print head takes a lot longer to heat up than the first one. That might be just a burn-in type of thing. So it's homing. Now we're coming out. Oh, that looks horrendous. That offset's not even right. What? Oh, jeez. So when you do this, you have to reload the configuration file, which means everything that I've ever set up on this thing, all the leveling, oh, I'll just pop the breaker, all the leveling and everything that I've done, I have to redo because I did it. So, oh well. I think I might be able to get you two videos today, uh, but I'm right now I'm waiting for the printer to go through its uh, calibration process. It takes uh, about 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And I wanted to show you one of the reasons why I, the dual uh, printer head is a really big deal for support. Because right now I've been in here, I've been chiseling this stuff out, and I still have a lot further to go to get to the bottom. And the, the issue here is because of the heat and the material similarities and the infill percent, which is sent to 30%, and that's pretty low, uh, I'm using a 45 degree offset. Dun, so, dun, dun. Dun, dun, for all the support and that's recommended from Modix and I'm still getting a lot it's really sticky and I, that's just probably the heat and everything it's just fusing in there and so it takes a long time of digging stuff out here with the different chisel tools and such and want to just be nice to put this in you can see I mean this is gonna these are leaving marks this is an active exercise here um, it wouldn't be nice just to be able to get these and drop it in water and then you pull it out of water and everything all these supports are gone I got this one this one this one this one I've already taken some out here but you can see I need to chisel these out some more whittle them out uh, so this is why we're we're taking the time right now to put this printer head on and we didn't have it when we first bought the printer and now come to really realize we need it um, I've got four boxes, I only need three printed up right now to do my first test. I'm gonna, uh, the next video I'm gonna set up for you guys, I'm actually gonna take these after I get done all removing all this stuff, which will take some time, and I'm gonna set up the first three and see how they do compared to, you know, what we had last time. I gotta install magnets and do all these types of things. So, uh, a lot of work to do there, but we are, we're gonna get this done. <laughs> While I'm waiting for that, I'm using my time to start working on this and I'll get that for another video. I also wanna comment, uh, somebody said I wasn't using my time correctly. Um, I, I just wanna address that. I, I, there's a lot of stuff I don't share on YouTube. A lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes, things that create pauses. And what I've been trying to do is every single day I'm fully occupied with something if I'm waiting for something to show up, I'm doing something else. So I would say I use my time pretty wisely. Uh, we've also had to stop working for on these projects. Remember, go over and work for our neighbor um, to help pay all the bills and stuff. So uh, there is a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you guys don't see everything of. So be careful to pass judgment when you don't know everything. One of the reasons why I'm stopping at these four that I have, which will really just be three on the wall because I'll do them in uh, multiples of three. That's how we're set up right now. Is I, this, this is version 11. I like how it's printing, I, other than these supports, of course. Uh, but we're fixing that. But I'm also wanting to make sure that they install nicely. We've got to get all the magnets put in. Uh, we've got to actually go mount everything on the wall. And before I commit the time to doing, you know, nine prints, which is, you know, that's like uh, nine days, nine days of printing, nonstop printing, I want to make sure that that next design that we commit to has all the key elements in it that are going to probably take us across the finish line before I do all nine again. Because remember last time I did that, I wasn't thinking ahead well enough, and I printed all nine up of the same model, same configuration variant, and ended up biting me because there was problems with it. So I don't wanna have that happen again. 
So we're gonna do just the three and then we'll make our design modifications to version 12. And assuming version 12 prints correctly and nicely, especially with the new dual extruder, then uh, we'll be off to the races and we can start printing them, the remainders, and really get the test going. I think nine is a good number to test with. Anything less than that, I think you're not really getting the full uh, story of what someone's gonna be going through. Doing one, uh, would have been a complete mess if we would have done that because we would have not learned about the interface problems between them. So you can see I'm still on this one hole. I've been talking to you guys for a few moments here. So this takes time. This is the only bad part about 3D printing. And again, that's why the dual extruder is going to be so awesome. So I think I got that pretty good. There's a hole in there. We're going to get that. There we go. Kind of plugging my feed hole there. I don't want to chew that out too much because that's actually scaled to the right setting. So more whittling. Well, it has been all day. <laughs> uh, what I've had to do, I've had to go through the bed leveling program multiple times. I've gotten this thing less than three quarters of a millimeter off maximum and we've got it printing now figured out how to get the dual head to print and uh, still still have some work to do there as far as alignment goes but what i wanted to show you is that we got our first just maybe in case you didn't know what the dual print thing did so here uh, you can clearly see it with black and white right so these things on the outside are just skirts. Get those off there. Yeah, a little tough. The little guy's kind of stuck to it. But in here, this is this is not the new filament that dissolves. But you can see, here we printed a support structure uh, out of the black material that's not uh, the same as the white. And in the future, this will be dissolvable. And we'll just drop this in water, and that dissolves out, and out comes the part that we want. Huge, huge benefit for us. So I got a few more things to do uh, as far as alignment goes and getting everything all just set up just right for this. Uh, it really is when you have a 3D printer, I've come to realize it's your initial setup. Once you get your initial setup dialed in, you, you're off to the races, but uh, getting your initial setup just right, that's the hard, hardest part. So, and that's certainly no different today. It's been all day just getting this thing going. So, uh, I'm going to try to get some of the grow boxes put together and then hopefully in the next video I'll be able to share uh, the grow wall uh, test update with you guys and we'll see how well those things are going to do. Uh, we're doing this uh, and then I'll get back to uh, the grow towers while we wait for the other boxes to print. So, you know, the idea was I'm working on the grow towers while I waited for the grow boxes to print. Now the grow boxes are printed, we'll get the test set up, we'll get that test run and then we'll make the modifications to the grow boxes and then we'll reprint what if, hopefully we won't have to reprint, hopefully we'll just be able to use what we have, but if we have to, we'll reprint and then we also have to print the six additional that we need uh, and all their support equipment. So that'll be like nine days, which will put us back to the grow towers. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed uh, following along the adventure here. It's pretty cool being able to get this far. So thanks to the folks at Modix for making this possible. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, uh, hit subscribe, ring that bell to uh, get notified when I put up new videos. And if you really like what we're doing, you can help us out on Patreon. In the meantime, this is Real Martian, out.